So good to be with you guys again. Ah, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, I get to speak to you guys two weeks in a row. Um, I wasn't expecting that, um, but um, I guess in some ways I was expecting that. I was, I was notified a little bit ago about it, but um, I'm genuinely excited this morning to continue this series on worship, and um, my full intention, I had this really uh, strong desire the last couple of weeks to really talk this week about music, um, because music is, is such a an important part. I mean, it's like we spend 30 to 45 minutes every Sunday morning in worship together with music. So I wanted to talk about that at some point, um, but uh, I, did, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit was taking us a whole different direction this morning. So I do, but maybe sometime at some point in the future, we'll have the opportunity to talk about music. Um, but I think we're supposed to talk about something else. So uh, it's this has been an interesting week of of sermon prep, and um, I'll say um, I have so much respect for people who do this week in and week out. <laughs> uh, it, it it it's a lot of work, but it's so it's also amazing because the Lord I feel like has just t- kind of taken me on a journey this week through kind of digging in to uh, to this subject and. Um, but it's been a challenging week. Uh, on Friday, I uh, was hanging out with some friends, and we, uh, I went over to their house, and I opened up the front door and like just fast enough that when he was telling me, don't, there's a, we have a dog that runs out the front door, and it was gone. <sighs> out the front door. Four plus hours later, we find that dog uh, that I hope to never see again. And it wasn't even their dog. They were dogs sitting for someone. So it was like even more, I know, it was just like, and here I am, the one that opened the door, and I'm like, oh. So, um, yeah, if I was a really good preacher, I would, that would be a perfect illustration into what I'm going to talk about today, but that was just my week, okay? That was just how that, how that kind of happened, but um, yeah. No, t- this morning, um, I, really, I really feel that... Um, we're to talk about, um, I don't know, something that's just, I think Gabe really kind of started to unpack a bit a couple weeks ago. And um, it, we may not be here very long if we can kind of get a hold of this. See, the purpose of the church is not to be consumer-based. And I think, I think that statement alone isn't new for anybody here. I think we all know that in some way, shape, or form, but our culture and the life outside of these walls is very consumer-based. So it's hard for us to not sometimes walk in to wherever we go with that kind of mentality. And it's, and I'm not trying to knock on anybody. My heart is to share this message out of love genuinely because it's also for me. I, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a church, even this one, and even been on platform with this idea of, Lord, I'm gonna lead worship, but I, I, I am really, I need something. I want something. And, and I think oftentimes the Lord does wanna give us those things, but he wants to call us to another place. And that's really what I want to dive into this morning. But let's pray before we go any further. Tell you what, y'all pray for me, I'll pray for you. How's that? (laughs) Lord, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you for this message. And I thank you for what you want to reveal to us through it. Lord, I pray for the hearts of everyone here in this place Lord, that you would just fill them with this understanding, with this revelation of who you are. Fill me with this revelation of who you are. Lord, that we would walk out of here with a a fire and intensity for your name. In Jesus' name, amen. It all, 
all of this revolves around worship. So as much as I may be talking about it, some other different things, uh, think about, keep this in the back of your mind that this is, we're still talking about worship here. Okay, so I may, I may talk about a, a different subjects and we, we're gonna talk about the disciples, we're gonna read some scripture, but all of it is still contained within worship. So keep that in your hearts if you would. So um, we know that our purpose when we come together is not to be getting something all the time, that there's, there's another greater thing that we're called to do but sometimes we get caught up in the culture that, that pushes us into the ways. And we're not the only ones who are like that. In fact, if we look at the Gospels, and I'm going to read some scripture here, the disciples, as they walked with Jesus, largely for the time that they walked, they thought they were going to get something. They had this idea that, not, and not just in a spiritual way, they, they believed that, that the Messiah, in their culture, they had this understanding that the Messiah was not just a spiritual leader, but a political leader. And a kingdom that would be established on the earth with a throne that would rule the nations and would rule, I mean, this was going to be big. And so, if you would go with me, let's hop over to Mark chapter 10. 35 and 37. Mark chapter 10, 35, 37. We get a little bit of a picture here. In verse 35, it says, Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. I know, there's a little part of my, in my mind, I'm like, Jesus probably was thinking, oh, this ought to be good. <laughs> And so he says, what do you want me to do for you? And they said, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your glory. See, they, they still had this idea that there was something that they were going to get. They were going to get a position. They were going to get authority. They were going to have power. And it was going to look like the earthly things that were around them. And, and so it, it wasn't until they actually saw the kingdom, it was after Jesus ascended and the Holy Spirit was given to them that they had this revelation of what their purpose was. And that's really what I want to get at today, is that we have to get a revelation of our purpose because I genuinely believe that as we, as we begin our journey, and even sometimes along the way, the Lord will give us things. He will. He does. He's good, right? He shows us signs, and he shows us wonders, and he gives us good gifts. But all of it is to, to point to something greater. And, and I think back to last week in the message that was brought about uh, building altars, all of these things that we do are to look up and to see who it is that we're worshiping. Jesus ran into that, that consumer mentality quite often. Um, as we Let's just hop over real quick to Luke 22. I'm flying through my notes this morning, y'all. So we might actually get out of here early. <laughs> um, Luke 22, um, verse 24. Jesus has, um, oh no, sorry. I'm a little ahead of myself here. I'm sorry. Let's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the, well, this is an important part, and I, I think it's a, to, important to note that even until the very end, Jesus is about to go to the cross and be crucified, and the disciples are still debating about who's, who's going to be greatest, who's going to get to sit on a throne, 
who's going to get the notoriety. So I think, I, I guess when I, when I read this passage, I, I think we, I don't have an excuse. Like I could, you know, we could look at the scripture. We could say, yeah, the disciples, they, they, they got to walk with Jesus. They got to see the miracles that he did. Why, how could they not praise him? How could they not, you know, see him for who he, who he is? And yet still they were consumed like a lot of us can be with the things that entice us and, and draw us in every single day to be consumers, to be only wanting to receive. My first point this morning that I want to emphasize is this shift that I believe that needs to take place in every believer, and that is to be transformed from consumer to consumed. Consumed by a passion for Jesus. And we, when we start our journey together with the Lord and we begin to walk, he, he draws us in by his spirit to know him and to be loved by him. And his desire is that we would see who he is and be, be consumed with a passion. I looked up the definition of consumed and, and it was really, really cool because we kind of sang about it this morning. One of the definitions is, and it was like, I think it was like the number two and it jumped out at me is to spend wastefully. Like we, we got to sing this morning, waste my hours and my days on you. Like, and, and I, I, I know some people have struggled with that song for the reason of like, it's not waste. It's true, it's not a waste, but to the world, it can look like a waste. It's never a waste when we're with him, right? But to, ev- to our culture, to our consumer culture, it can look like a waste. We're to be consumed with a passion for Jesus. Jesus ran into that consumer mentality, right? We talked, I was just talking about that. John chapter six, let's hop over. He gets done feeding the 5,000, right? And all of these, these people are following him. And in uh, verse 26, Jesus says, most surely I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, not because you saw how great I am, but because you ate the bread and you ate the fish. You got something. I think there's a point. I know there's been a point in my life and I'm sure there's a point in a lot of people here's lives where Jesus is asked, why are you following me? What do you seek? What are you looking for? What do you want? And I think it's only to show us our true heart's intention. Not to push us away, not to break us down, tear us down, but to say, what matters to you? What's important? Do you see me for who I am? Is that why you're here? To be consumed by a passion for Jesus takes us deeper. And it looks like serving him. And this is, Gabe and I were talking about this earlier this week. And it's, if we can get a hold of this, this really digs in to another level. It looks like serving him, like ministering to the heart of God. We do that. We can do that. It's actually what we're called to do. We're called to minister to the heart of God. Wow. What an honor. What an honor that we get to minister to the heart of God with our praise and with our worship. And that's, in, that's not just on, in songs on platform when we're all gathered together, although there is a power to that and that we talked about last week and that's amazing. But there's a, there's a call for us to come deeper to a place of ministering to the heart of the Lord 
with our lives. It looks like this, this surrender, this being consumed is everything that I want in my life, Lord, I want to be filtered through you. Everything that I see, everything that I desire, any successes that I could have are only ever submitted to you, Lord. I'm consumed by a passion for your name. It's what he wants from us. And I think there's a lot of people here who that shift in their journey, that happened, that began a long time ago. We have a lot of people who are consumed by a passion for Jesus here. And maybe, this is, maybe these are just words to the journey that already started. And I love that. And be encouraged if that's you today. And you're like, yeah, I am. This is awesome. But some, for some of us also, it's a reminder. It's a reminder of a commitment that we once had. Of a passion that we once had. See, I, I do genuinely believe that um, that's, this, this, this consumed heart mindset is a choice we often have to make daily, monthly, weekly, yearly. We can once start on one side consumed and then find ourselves derailed when it didn't end up being what we thought it was going to be. We can find ourselves, perhaps, like the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Why weren't they together with the ones in the upper room? Something didn't go like they planned. They were, this wasn't, this wasn't what I expected. I thought he was going to be a king with a throne. This is awkward. <laughs> and I committed. I said I was in, and people saw me, and my family was like, you're crazy. But, you know, like, see, there's, there's that continual moment by moment, day by day commitment to be consumed by the Lord, by this passion for Jesus. Amen. That, that journey begins a lot with being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm excited because Pastor Taylor is going to talk about the Holy Spirit next week. And I don't know what that's all going to be, but I, I, I'm sure it's going to somehow tie in in some way. But there's something amazing about that filling that leads to a deeper revelation that allows us to be consumed with a passion. See, consumed people have no problem praising Jesus. In fact, they can't find a reason not to. Right? When you're consumed, there's, you can't find a reason in the world not to praise the one who is worthy the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one that John in chapter one, John was consumed. John in chapter one says that he is the, in the beginning he was with God and he was God and all things were made through him that were made and without him nothing was made that was made. And in his life, and his life was the light of men, he got a glimpse and he was consumed by this passion, not for what Jesus was gonna give him any longer, but for what he just saw, Jesus. We're called to a deeper place. See, we can start with, thank you, Jesus, for saving me, for healing me, for delivering me. And that's, a, that's an amazing place to start. We have to start there. But we can't stay there. We can't stay there. I think oftentimes when we stay there, a lot of other things in our spiritual walk stay there. We got to keep going. We got to keep digging in and being consumed by a passion for the Lord. Amen? Is that hitting home at all? 
It overflows. And this, I felt like as I was preparing, I felt like the Lord just kind of wanted to just drop this in my heart. And, and I just wanted to share it. It's like, believe me, there isn't any amount of passion that you have for the Lord that he doesn't already have for you back. He's so passionate for you. But what happens when that passion in our hearts grow, it grows, we begin to really fully step into this communion. We begin to see this amazing communion that he so desires with us. Being consumed with a passion for Jesus sets our praise in order, sets our worship in order. Gabe talked about this two weeks ago, and uh, I, wanna, I wanna share it again because it was so, so good. Worship starts when we serve him, when we minister to his heart, and we ascribe him worth, and we see him for who he is, and we praise him because he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and then that leads us to a place of communion. And then... What's amazing is the Lord pours out his presence and we're refreshed and we're rejuvenated in his presence. So he does give, but it's even more powerful when we start with this surrendered place. I I was thinking this morning, and I haven't well fleshed out this analogy, but I, I, I was thinking this morning about marriage. Marriage is a great example of the importance of starting with serving. But that leads to this wonderful back and forth communion that can happen when both hearts are in that place of desiring to serve, of desiring to give. It's such a great picture of of Jesus and the bride. Right? When we come with that heart to serve him because we love him, because we see him for who he is, he does the same back. And it's this back and forth beautiful dance that we're called to to be a part of and participate in. Amen. That passion that consumes us, it begins with our hearts. Begins with our hearts. The way of of Jesus, the Jesus way, is a growing journey of surrender with that daily choice to be consumed with passion. I think in our constant choice that we have every day, we can often find ourselves maybe not choosing. If we don't choose, we can find ourselves participating in rituals of coming together and singing songs and regurgitating scriptures with no heart connection. And that's the second point that I really want to talk about is how all of this is a matter of the heart. Scripture, as I've studied over the last couple weeks, and and I've seen it before, but it was even more amplified, if you will, um, for the last couple weeks, is this, this is theme interwoven throughout Scripture of the heart of how that's what he wants. He wants our hearts. And Jesus kind of calls out the the Sadducees and the Pharisees about this very thing, right? And we saw this in in Matthew chapter 15. So if you want to take a second, we can go over to Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. We have... The, the Sadducees and the Pharisees are calling out the disciples because they're not following the law. They're not following the rules. They're not, you know, wearing the right shirt, <laughs> you know, to church. Or they wore a hat to church. You know, we're getting, they get caught up with the rules and the regulations. But you don't look right. You're not doing the right things. You're not acting the right way. And Jesus says, you don't even get it. And he, he calls him out here in, in verse chapter eight, verse eight, 
chapter 15. Actually, I'm going to start in verse 7. He calls, he calls them hypocrites. It says, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. If we want to be consumed, it starts with our hearts. So we see, uh, we, we can look at the life of David as an incredible picture of a heart. I mean, he was said to be a man after God's own heart. And in his moments of failure, he had this amazing realization. In Psalm 51, this is right after he's been called out by the prophet Nathan for his sin. And he has this revelation and he, he declares it here in, in Psalm 51, verse 16 and 17. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. These, oh God, you will not despise. He's after our heart. The greatest commandment is love the Lord your God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. It encompasses everything. It consumes all of our lives, but it begins with the heart. Because this is a heart issue. I, I am reminded, I was reminded as I was studying of something that happened to me <laughs> about five years ago. And I've been a believer for, since I was a, a child. You guys heard my testimony last week. And I've incre had incredible moments of seeing the Lord work in incredible ways. But about five years ago, I was in a season of doubt. I was in a season where I was finding myself taking the step off of that journey of commitment and being consumed by the Lord, by a, by a passion for his name. And I, I was questioning a lot. I was throwing a lot up in the air. I was questioning the goodness of God. And I, I think what is amazing about this story that I'm about to tell you is God was not never afraid of my doubts. He's never afraid of your fears. He's never afraid of your doubts. He's never afraid of your questions. In fact, he wants you to bring them to him so that he can show you who he is. So here I was in the middle of, of all of these doubts. I was on my way home from work and I was on 35 southbound in Louisville. I, can mo I know exactly where I was on the highway when this happened. And I remember I, I, in my heart, I just said to the Lord, you know, if a, if a good God could send somebody to hell that I don't think would deserve it, then I don't want to be a part of that belief system. I don't want to be a part of that, a relationship with that kind of God. And in that moment, and I remember I was, I was not close, y'all. I was, I was far, and I felt my heart beginning to harden toward the Lord. And in a snap of a moment, the Lord said to me, how can you, created, know and have the compassion like the creator? And in that moment, my point of telling that story was not to, find the result of that question that I had, but it was to come back to a place and bow once again to the king of kings, to be surrendered once again, to see him for who he is. And that choice, see, it, those seasons can come quickly. It was not very long that I was in that little season of doubt and question, but the Lord brought me back and he, and he wants that. So even if you're here and you have some of those questions and doubts, or maybe you're finding yourself on the edge, 
take those to the Lord and find that he wants to pull you in to show you his heart and so you can soften yours to see him once again. Because to be consumed by a passion, to be consumed by this fury for the Lord, it begins within our hearts. He wants that drive within us to be alive. The heart is such an, a, a powerful, powerful thing throughout Scripture. We really kind of see this picture. Proverbs says that it de determines the course of our life. That's why the, 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 the encouragement is to guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life, right? So we have a choice of what we're going to do with our hearts and how we're going to be surrendered. And that, that passion that begins to build within us, it, as it overflows, as it grows for the Lord, it's not always pretty. <laughs> and this is where I want to kind of bring it back into worship. That overflow in our heart doesn't always, it's not always elevated on a platform. It's not always the right key the right rhythm, but it's true because it's an overflow from your heart, which is what he desires. I was talking to a friend of mine this past week, pastor friend of mine, and we were talking, uh, he was telling me about a story of, of a church that he was attending uh, up in Indiana. And uh, there was this lady that, that went to that church and she just loved the Lord. She just had this passion for Jesus. And she would sing out boldly in the congregation. She had this just, just bold passion to proclaim the name of Jesus, to sing out. The only problem for everyone around her was that she was off key <laughs> and out of rhythm. And what was interesting is uh, he was telling me, he's like, they, this, this was, it went all the way to, to elders meetings talking about what do we do? And they had to, in those meetings, say to the, ask within themselves, why aren't we like that? Why aren't we consumed with that? Where are our hearts at? See, it's, it's so much more important that the expression that's within your heart rise up to the Lord from that pure place than it is for what it may sound like around you. I, in fact, I encourage you, if you do hear somebody that's off key, sing louder. <laughs> do it. It will, it will cause you, it cause each one of us to take our eyes off of ourselves and what we're getting out of this moment and saying, isn't he worthy? Isn't he worthy to receive the glory and the honor and the praise? Amen. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You know the story of the, the widow's two mites in the Bible, right? She's coming and she brings these two little copper pennies and she sets them into the offering. And Jesus said she gave more than any of the other people. Why? Because she gave everything that she could to praise. It was her worship that she brought. That's what he wants from us. And it, if I say nothing else, I hope that I, I speak to your heart this morning with desire to go to a deeper place, to know that we're called up from a place of consuming to a place of being consumed with passion for the Lord. No matter where you are on that journey, whether that's consumed <laughs> right now or maybe this is new to you and maybe you're, you're needing to step in, 
I want to encourage you today to do that. And I'm, I'm wrapped up. I don't need to ramble on. Let's, let's stand, and I want to have the worship team come. This morning, if you, if you need prayer at all regarding any of this, maybe, maybe you're here and there's a, a desire to be consumed with a passion for Jesus. Maybe that's, that's something new that you haven't experienced yet. I want to encourage you to come and receive prayer. But I also want to encourage you, maybe you're here and... You made that commitment a long time ago. You, you genuinely were passionate about the Lord at another time, in a different season. And maybe life got in the way. You know, maybe just the things happened along the way. And you found yourself more consuming than being consumed. I want to encourage you to come as well this morning and be prayed over to to receive once again that consuming passion for the Lord. So that when we come to this place and we're gathered together, there's nothing that hinders, nothing that hinders your praise from rising up to the King. See, when you come and you're coming and we all come together and we serve the Lord with our praise, it leads us back to that thing that I was talking about last week. There's a power in that unity where the Lord turns his eyes and he looks and he says, yeah, Harvest Still Church, those are the ones. They're consumed with a passion for my name. They're consumed with a passion for me. Let's pray. Jesus, this morning, that's our desire. Lord, that's my heart's cry. To be consumed from my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength with this passion for you. And it would lead me to bow every day, every moment to praise and lift you up. That your name would be exalted from my lips, with my life, from my heart. I thank you for what you're going to do in our lives.